Hey YouTube, I just wanted to get on here while I had some momentum after homeschooling and talk to you about the nutritional aspect of preparing for surgery. I will be having my complete abdominal hysterectomy in four weeks, in a few days, and I have been preparing since I found out I already eat a really good, nutrient-dense, clean, everyone's version is different, uh, nutritional protocol. I try not to say diet too often. Um, for you guys that don't know, I really don't have an introduction video on my YouTube channel. I am a personal trainer, a group fitness instructor, health and wellness coach, holistic uh, nutrition. Uh, you get just kind of, you know, different things like that. But basically, have been in the fitness and nutritional world for uh, 11 years now. It's been part of my life, not just for clients and for students, but also for myself personally. I uh, do a lot of different things, uh, experiment with myself with different nutritional protocols and see if it works for me or not. Up until about three years ago, I was vegan. Uh, I didn't become uh, vegan uh, for any like dogmatic reasons. Um, it just kind of stuck with me. I just kind of became who, what I did. I did, I, you know, I'm very familiar with detoxifying, juice fasting, juice feasting, cleanses, things like that. So I also have knowledge on that as well. And about three or so years ago, I started experimenting, adding in animal products, eggs, you know, different things like that. And on and off now since, I've been going back and forth between a vegan or vegetarian type of protocol a uh, like a paleo version, a pescatarian version, a keto type of a ver uh, version, so different pr protocols. I'm um, playing around with macros and calories and all of that stuff for, for quite a while. So I'm pretty versed in just calorie counting, macro counting, um, and different styles of nutrition protocols. And I always try to stick to the cleanest, most unprocessed uh, version as possible. I try to keep as little um, ultra processed and processed foods out of my, my daily. Again, I, I live holistic and as natural as possible. And when we get to that video, I will share those techniques, but I use essential oils. I use herbs. I use those types of things, plant medicine as medicine. I don't take over the counter uh, painkillers, anti-inflammatics, any of that stuff. Now for surgery, that's going to be a different uh, story but I will be doing certain protocols to remove those toxins as quickly as possible, anesthesia, pain meds, and things like that to get the, the liver functioning as quickly as possible. You know, with different things like activated charcoal, you know, or diatomaceous earth, um, herbal teas to stimulate the bowels, to move things, and um, yeah, there's just different herbs and things like that. So on that quick little note, um, I'm gonna try to keep this not too long, but I tend to get into nutrition and I tend to ramble a lot. So again, I always say eat organic as much as possible. If you're not get, you know, eating things like, um, if you're eating something that has a thicker peel, you might be able to get away with it being non-organic. Just make sure it's, uh, try to keep it from being GMO. If you guys don't know your stickers, threes are usually genetically modified. Um, but typically, if you can't do 100% organic, I'd say try to, you know, the thicker skin stuff you can get away with. You can kind of do that. But I always say try to go as organic as possible. Um, clean everything up. Try to get all the ultra-processed foods out, all processed foods out. Not all, again, because like what I'm going to show you and share with you is some processed types of foods. But again, ultras, we're talking like Doritos and cheeses and cookies and candies and craps like that. You don't want any of that. And if you're preparing for surgery, which I would recommend anyone doing, and I actually saw a video yesterday on a woman's health expert who said, how do you prepare for surgery nutritionally, mentally, and physically? So we talked about, she talked about nutrition, she talked about what your mental practices could be and your exercises could be. So I already did a video talking about what I was doing for my physical activity leading up to surgery and now we're going to talk a little bit nutritionally um i mean i'm going to show you some products that i use on a daily basis or almost on a daily basis i will verbalize the types of herbs that i rotate i don't do them 
every day, but they are in rotation. Again, herbs, you've got to understand your herbs and just like your essential oils, understand them. Do your research before you just take something because it's supposed to be good for your liver or it's supposed to be good for your heart. You always want to make sure you check with your physician. Again, I am not a doctor. I am not... I, this is just me sharing my information, right? This is just what I personally do. And you should never do what somebody else does. Um, you should always talk to your physician if you're on certain medications. You never want to make sure there's no interactions and things like that. Now, just like preparing for surgery, it's very important when the nurse talks to you that you stop doing certain things before. And not just your medications that are prescribed, but also herbals, because herbals can interact with certain things and cause some problems, and you have to be very careful and mindful of that. All right, so organic as much as possible, whole foods, whole real food. I'm showing this because this is sitting here. I got these tangelos yesterday. Um, eat what's in season. So it's winter here in Michigan. So citrus and pineapples and citruses, um, greens, Always get your dark leafies in, um, but try to eat what's in season. Don't eat watermelon in the winter. Eat watermelon in the summer. Eat foods, the fruits and vegetables as much as possible that are seasonal. Just because they can grow in California doesn't mean they should grow it here, or that you should be eating it here. So if they can grow watermelon right now in California, doesn't mean you should be eating watermelon right now. You should be eating things that are more seasonally appropriate. So I is along with parts of the nutrition, a circadian rhythm, and eating according to the season. <clears throat> Fall, winter, summer, spring. So right now citrus is what's um what is going on and so that's what you need to do. So um whole foods, real foods, organic, pesticide free, gen genetically modified make sure that those are out make sure that it's non-gmo organic pesticide free herbicide free fun you know all of those things you want to make sure that very little to <clears throat> uh, as much very little exposure to that okay as possible because those toxins overload the system and you really want to start cleaning any extra toxins out of your system before surgery if you have time four weeks six weeks prior prep Start changing nutritional protocols. Start taking good or bad, the bad stuff out and start adding some good stuff in. Prepare your body for the trauma that's coming. Prepare your body and set yourself up for a quicker healing process. Less inflammation, quicker healing. Set yourself up for success, not failure. So not only do we have to keep in mind of our physical activity post-surgery, but we have to nutritionally prepare for it. And I will also share post-surgery nutrition, what I'm going to do post-surgery. That'll be in the post videos, post-op hysterectomy. This is what we're doing to prepare for that. So whole, natural, real food, <clears throat> as much as un unprocessed as possible. Healthy fats, nuts, seeds, avocados, make sure they're in the whole food forms. They're not roasted, they're not salted, they're not cooked. Get them raw, walnuts, pecans, and cashews would probably, almonds would be my top four picks for nuts. Seeds would be flax seed. Uh, chia seed, if you can tolerate it, I can't really tolerate seed. And hemp seed would be my three top seed options to add to smoothies or, or foods or just whatever. Nutritional use is good to have around just for your B vitamins, whether you're a meat eater or not. It's just good to have that. And if you can't get it, substitute. <coughs> Whole grains like oats, I do a lot of gluten-free oats. Steel cut oats, a regular oatmeal, uh, whole uh, old brown rice, white rice. These are singular foods, you know, breads. If I'm doing bread, it's like an Ezekiel sprouted bread or wraps, or if I'm doing like a, a bread, it's an organic bread. It's a whole grain. It's just loaded with different types of whole grains. Uh, potatoes, um, I don't do tons of potatoes anymore, and that's because of the um, the lectins, typically I, I overeat those. I tend to either crave more or I actually start to break out. So I'm, I do struggle to have some of those issues. Um, what else? I do um, protein sources. <clears throat> I go back and forth between lean chicken or fish. Again, organic or wild caught are my two top sources. Sometimes I do some lean ground turkey. Um, over Thanksgiving, I'd got like... I made turkey breast in an abundance. 
But again, you wanna make sure it's pasture red, grass fed, grass finished, organic. You wanna make sure there's no hormones or anything like that added in there. <clears throat> so anyways, um, lean proteins, beans and lentils. So like black beans, kidney beans. I don't do chickpeas a lot. Those don't, I don't do tons of beans. Every time I do tons of beans for a protein source, I have a lot of digestive issues. Um, I tend to flare up a little more, a little more inflammation digestively. I don't know if that's because of the fibroids and things like that. It just gradually seems to get worse. Uh, lentils, I usually do like red split lentils. They'll seem to do pretty good like in the form of curries or doles. I will use those. I also use plant base and bone broth type proteins. Um, I just started playing around with bone broth protein. So I will either do just straight bone broth like kettle and fire or just bone broth in general or I found a good bone a chicken broth that's bone broth that's um, um, powdered form that you can just mix with water you can do plain collagen you can do the ancient nutrition brand is multi collagen you can just do regular collagen or you can do a bone broth protein which is gonna have protein and collagen <clears throat> so one of my staples that's pretty much a daily or every other day is uh, Sun Warrior plant-based vanilla um, Warrior Blend. Um, this is a great protein uh, source. This one, I it took me many years to find this. That a lot of plant-based proteins, because I was vegan and I needed a little bit of extra protein, um, and the beans weren't doing it. Um, I finally found one that didn't upset my stomach. Like I could do plant-based protein in the past, but I had to do it not very often because again, the ingredients would cause me digestive upset. So this one doesn't cause me any digestive upset, and I've been doing this every day and this could go in my protein oats it could go in a, uh, a latte a hot medicinal drink or just a shake or a smoothie all right um i've played around with the chocolate and the vanilla so right now i've got vanilla this is a good brand again a little pricey but again this is just something i don't do every day sometimes i do half a scoop sometimes this goes into more like coffees or hot lattes or what I call a medicinal drink. And my medicinal drink usually has like matchas or medicinal mushrooms like reishi, shaga, cordyceps, things, things like that. But this is a, a protein, bone broth protein. You can also can get just straight collagen. I have used the Garden of Life collagen, which is just collagen. You get it unflavored and you can add that to stuff. Um, you can get it, um, what's the other brand? Vital Proteins. And you want, again, you want clean. You just want to go out and get any old, you want to make sure it's coming from clean animals that are grass-fed, grass-finished, pasture-raised, organic-fed, things like that. You've got, that's important. Don't just go out and buy any old thing. Same thing with this. It's organic. All the ingredients are organic. You've got to make sure your stuff is clean. It's, it's been tested. It's not, you know, you got to, you got to make sure you just don't go buy out what the cheapest stuff is. It's important that your food is quality and your supplements are quality because there's shit everywhere, okay? And again, you wanna set your body up for success and not failure, whether that's you're getting ready for surgery or whether you're trying to burn body fat, whatever it is, okay? So this is a superfood powder. I've been using Amazing Grasses for years now. I lose track on how many years, probably since I went vegan, so this is probably 10 plus years. It's an amazing company. I personally like the watermelon one. I kind of stick to it. I've tried the other ones. I've tried the immune boosting one. I've tried the um, berry flavored ones, the plain ones, the detox ones. I have some of those in there. They're all great. I use this as kind of like my pre-workout. And I've been using, I mix some when I do watermelon in the summer because I eat a ton of watermelon. Watermelons by the the dozen sometimes. Um, it's a great to add to the get your greens. I love it because it's just easy to digest in. It basically makes sure I get all of my, my vitamins and minerals if I'm not eating a bunch of veg. And I can't eat a ton of veg, I can't. I've learned that I just can't do a ton of veg anymore. My body can't digest it, it makes me heavy, bloated. So this is another way for me to get it in. <clears throat> One to two scoops a day, depending on the situation and, and what I'm doing at the gym and, and how physically active I am. There's different ones. This one does have energy and that's coming from your mate and matcha. Um, I use green, I use matcha green tea. Um, so besides my, my, my whole food supplements like this, I have tons of herbal teas, which um, are adaptogenics. They're anywhere from spice teas or just like Tulsi tea or peppermint teas or ginger teas, things like that. Whole food type based teas, black teas. Um, organic coffee, things like that. I just started using BCAAs. 
as a pre-workout and post-workout. I don't use it every day post-workout, but I definitely have been using it pre-workout. BCAs, this is again, gluten-free, sugar-free, sucralose-free, read your labels, soy-free. It's plant-based and it has um, all your essential BCAAs and your EAAs, which is essential amino acids, potassium, so, <laughs> potassium, magnesium, and sodium. So I use these two kind of as my pre-workout with some kombucha sometimes. Um, and that's usually what I do before the gym. If I don't have a gym day, it just depends on where I have it in the day. All right, the other thing besides like this is a, the, you know, you could do different types, but this is just another superfood green powder that I have. I got it free with a product I was sampling last year. It's just kind of, and I keep them all in the fridge. Keep my green powders in the fridge. My other one's in a dark place. I go through them pretty quickly, so I would say if you don't, put them in the fridge just to keep them from getting weird. Um, so basically, this is a, a greens and superfoods. So this one particularly has 28 greens and superfoods, balances and increase anti-alkalinity. Uh, uh, has This also has probiotics and digestive enzymes and supports bodies, natural detoxification function, as well as this also has prebiotic and probiotic fibers. Also very important. So green foods, again, um, raw food right now in the winter is really not an option. I do some light salads, but I put a lot of hot food on top of the cold food. You want to eat warm food in the winter. You don't want to be eating a bunch of cold food, raw, vegan, done it in the winter. It doesn't work. It's not possible here in Michigan. Quality of food. The other thing, too, is remember, even if you're getting organic food on the shelf, the quality is probably going to be better if you buy it frozen because things that are frozen, guys, whether it's fruit or veg, is usually picked at its peak freshness and its peak ripeness and flash frozen. So there's actually been testing that there's more nutrients in frozen food, fruit and veg, than there is in the raw food, which has been picked and shipped from California or Mexico or wherever it's coming from this time of year. So keep that in mind. Um, and it's just better just to have that. So people that do raw vegan, great. You know, I've done it. <laughs> I've done stuff like that. Um, I just don't think that's an option in a place where it's cold. Um, and you have multiple seasons. If it's a place where you have an abundant fruit and veg that, and it's hot, it might work for you. But otherwise, I just don't think it, it works like that. Um, so that's my quick nutritional pre. And again, I always eat pretty much whole, real, organic, natural foods. If I'm not eating stuff that's not processed, if something's processed, it might be. Um, I mean, these things are processed to a degree. But... Um, you know, we're talking like chips and, and things like that, you know. I really try not to do any of that stuff. Be it bread can be processed depending on that how that works. Healthy fats that I'm doing right now are, like I said, avocados, walnuts, pecans. I don't do tons of almonds right now. I just prefer wal walnuts and pecans. Flaxseed every day, one to two tablespoons of flaxseed. That's just in general really good for your omega-3s and just women's health in general, men's health in general. Um... Uh, nutritional yeast is a great source of not just B vitamins, but protein as well. Um, like I said, lean meats, make sure everything's clean. Again, I just eat like this. And the closer I get to surgery, the more dialed in it's going to be. The week of surgery, because I have to do a bowel prep on Thursday, um, the day before, that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday leading up into it, there'll be a protocol that I'm going to create and follow, which will probably be uh, basically whole food uh, the first day or so. And then that Wednesday, I'll probably maybe start going into a heavy liquid uh, nutrient type of thing because Thursday will be a clear liquid fast. Basically, it's a clear liquid fast where you're doing water, coconut water, broths, anything you can see through if you've ever done a bowel cleanse. That's the rules on that one. So I'm gonna get my body prepped and prepared with a lot of healthy fats, you know, to get it to ready um, for surgery. So just keep your food clean, guys. Prepare yourself for surgery, whether it's a week out, two weeks, four weeks out, just start getting your body prepared and take that nutrition in, in, in that momentum and take that into post-op into recovery because you will recover so much faster when you're eating whole real foods. Again, post-op, it's going to be a gradual into foods. That are, I'm going to take this stuff to the hospital for me because I'm just anal like that. I'm going to take green powders, protein powders, BCAAs. I'm going to take my own herbal teas, things I can control that I can mix with some water, which I will take myself because tap water has chlorine and other toxins in it. So I'll also have my own water with me. 
Um, these are things I did post up my, my C-section and I healed a lot faster and that was almost eight years ago. So I know a lot more and so I will take protein bars. I'll just take, you know, things that I can easily digest and get my body in the momentum of healing and detoxifying those chemicals from surgery and those, you know, anesthesia and all of that. I mean, it's important that we have to have that for surgery, but also it's important to get it out as quickly as possible. So hopefully this information helps you guys. If you have any questions or comments below, um, if I remember, I will try to link to the products. I'm just going to verbalize it right now. I'm not very good at vlogging. I'm not very good at linking things. Just giving you guys some general information for me. But the products are amazing grasses. The specific one is green superfood watermelon flavor. So when I use on a daily basis, the other one right here, the other one is the badger, honey badger, BCAA wild berry. Got this off of Amazon, vegan, clean. Um, next one is sun warrior, vanilla protein powder. Um, they have other flavors, but this is my favorite. Um, ancient nutrition is a Great company by Dr. Josh X. Totally stand behind his products. I haven't used tons of them, but definitely love the stuff that I do use because it can be a little pricier. So again, when I'm using supplements, I try to make sure that I split the quality of that. And the other one is just one I had around, which I don't even know if they carry this anymore, but these guys carry a superfood blend. So any good, clean, organic superfood blend, green food blend is amazing to have on hand um, for that. And just eat whole real food, guys. That's all I can say. Whole real food. Get your body prepared. You know, we're going to prepare our body physically. We're going to prepare, prepare our body mentally. And we're going to prepare our body nutritionally for surgery. Okay, guys? Love you. I hope you have a great day. It's cold and snowy here in, uh, in Michigan. I wanted to get this video done and share that with you. So if you want to get started now, whether you're having surgery or not, go at it. So love you guys. Bye.